And to start us off, we're in Rio looking at how those online and in the streets got behind some of the athletes at the 2016 Olympics. I am so excited! And she's not the only one. Fans from around the world gathered under big screens in Rio de Janeiro on Sunday to watch the fastest man on earth win his third consecutive Olympic gold medal in the 100 meters with a time of 9.81 seconds. The Olympic Stadium was sold out and social media was full of support for the Jamaican. And the Olympian doesn't seem to have let success go to his head too much as he posed for selfies and congratulated other athletes on their success. Fellow Jamaican Shelley Ann Fraser Price, who was sporting a new patriotic hairdo, especially for the Games, was also hoping for a third 100 meters gold medal, but had to settle for a bronze after losing out to compatriot Elaine Thompson. Even though I was in pain, to be honest, I wasn't thinking about the pain. I just wanted to get down and to, to give it the best shot I could. And I was just happy that I came away with a bronze medal. And from the most famous names, we move to some newcomers. Kosovo and Fiji won their first ever Olympic medals this year, and the athletes responsible for the success have received heroes' welcomes back home. Fiji's Prime Minister announced a public holiday to celebrate the success of the country's gold medal-winning rugby team, who thrashed Great Britain 43-7. The whole of the tiny island nation got behind the team and the Prime Minister said that it was only right to celebrate the win in style. And Kosovans took to the streets to welcome their heroine, Melinda Kilmandi, back home. The 25-year-old won gold last Sunday in the 52-kilogram judo event. Meanwhile, Singapore's parliament honoured their first gold medal holder, swimmer Joseph Schooling. Right now I'm trying to focus on what happened in parliament. You know, first guy, first sportsman to be honoured in parliament, getting a standing ovation. I think that was pretty cool for me and my family, you know, to have that honour and that chance for everyone to say the things that they said in front of us. And, you know, it was pretty cool. It was a cool feeling. I had goosebumps. And perhaps the most supported team on social media and in the stadiums throughout the Olympics has been the refugee team. The team made up of athletes who have had to flee their countries due to conflict have competed under the Olympic flag. The hashtags Refugee Olympic Team and Team Refugees have trended on Twitter with messages of support coming from all over the world. Photos have even shown refugees in camps crowded around TVs watching the action. The idea behind the team was to send a message of hope to all the refugees around the world, and it has certainly achieved that aim. But let's forget about beach volleyball, tennis and javelin for a second. Pokemon Go is challenging the Olympics for most popular sports among young Brazilians. Hundreds of them have been flocking to Rio's parks, clutching mobile phones and hunting for virtual creatures since the app's release in Brazil just two days before the Games. And it really is a phenomenon that looks set to continue once the Olympics are over, as phone company Claro said that around 2 million of its users have downloaded the game in the Rio area alone. <laughs> 